This is the twin vacuum chamber comparison experiment. In the left chamber I have a straight filament tungsten vintage squirrel cage vacuum bulb. There is no gas in this bulb. I know this because the manufacturer said this was the case and I can actually put my hand on this bulb without burning my hands. If the gas was filled I would not be able to do that when the bulb was switched on. And as an example of that I have one here. The same bulb, squirrel cage filament, vacuum, I can put my hands on it. If that had gas inside it, I would burn my hands by touching it. The right chamber has an exposed filament, as you can see there. The exact same wattage and output, 40 watts. Straight filament, tungsten cage. And that is the right chamber, and on that right chamber I will insert gases. In particular, carbon dioxide gas. Now each of these chambers has a filament, has a pressure gauge on it. A vacuum pressure gauge. There's a vacuum pressure gauge there as well. And each of the chambers is isolatable via mini ball valves. These are quarter inch. So if I zoom out, you can see it connects back to the vacuum pump. And on the right side, there's a mini ball valve there for the vacuum connection. A T so the gases can be inserted. And then a mini ball valve connecting to the gases via a 6mm hose, which then connects into this special adapter hose there because it is a 600 gram carbon dioxide bottle used for welding purposes, with a pressure regulator on, and a smaller than normal 3 8 BSP connection. There are four switches on this system. The main power switch there, the vacuum pump switch for activating the vacuum, and then two light switches for each chamber. These light switches will only activate if there is 0.8 bar pressure or less because there's a DPS switch in the system which stops it from activating and that is to prevent electrocution because these are accessible and it would be an exposed wire. Now when I switch the vacuum pump on I will start to evacuate these chambers. So now I'll activate the vacuum pump and evacuate these chambers one at a time so that's the first one. So the pressure drop. So the chamber's evacuated. Now what you will notice is that that doesn't go all the way to zero, which means it doesn't get to a full vacuum inside that chamber. So that's that one. And I'll do the other one. There it is. Now what I've found is because it hasn't fully evacuated, there's still air and therefore oxygen in this chamber. So if I activate that light, it will just react with the oxygen and burn the filament. So I wouldn't be able to do the experiment. So I'll leave that running for five minutes to get all the remaining air out. Now that I've run it for five minutes, what I then did is I put some carbon dioxide into that chamber, filled it up to atmospheric pressure and then evacuated it again in order to purge out any air and oxygen which is in that chamber so I can activate it without burning the filament. This one is just the, the vacuum chamber which I can activate because it's in a bulb, there's no risk of exposure. And you can see that that is bright as it was before in the lamp above me. It's very bright. So, let's see what happens when I add some carbon dioxide to that chamber. So here's the valve, turn the valve, get some pressure in there. So there we go, that's up to 0.2 bar, let's put the light on, 
and you can see already that is visibly less bright than that one and that's just at 0.2 bar so now let's add some more and see what happens you see it getting dimmer zoom out, you see the pressures are going up keeps rising there's a the shimmering the top is now brighter than the bottom because of convection, hot, hot air rises which is what we'd expect and then the DPS switch will activate when it gets to 0.8 bar. There we go. Let's do it again. Now that I've evacuated it again, you can activate the light and you can see the difference to before to make a comparison. See it's bright all over, top and bottom. Let's add some carbon dioxide, add a little bit, getting it up to say 0.8 bar, switch the light on, sorry 0.2 bar, there we go, that's at 0.2 bar, zoom out, see there's no tricks, add the gas, carbon dioxide gas, now, global warmists would have you believe that the back radiation from this carbon dioxide would raise the temperature of the filament. Raising the temperature of the filament would make the filament brighter. It isn't getting brighter, it's dimming. Back radiance is obviously not a problem. Now here, I've set the pressure to about 0.7 bar carbon dioxide just so we can have a comparison between the two like for like comparison so let's switch on the vacuum look at that nice and bright switch on the carbon dioxide version visibly not very bright switch off the other one you can see the differences in the top and the bottom look at that Zoom out. Carbon dioxide has added no heat to that filament whatsoever. It has extracted heat via convection and conduction, as one would expect. See there, no pressure. 0.7 bar. Straightforward. Direct proof. Carbon dioxide did not back radiate to this heat source and make it hotter.